In this video, we'll be taking a look at one NFL game happening on October 24, 2022, and providing you with free team picks and total picks for this game, so two picks in total. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports, let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released, so that you have more time to plan out your bets as we provide these videos on a daily basis. I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on this one NFL game after fully watching this this video. One more thing before we start, if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive betting picks to take your sports betting journey to the next level, then check out our Patreon in the link down below where we offer anywhere from one betting pick a day up to 10 betting picks a day and much more. Now let's get started. Chicago Bears vs. New England Patriots The 2-4 Chicago Bears travel to Foxborough, Massachusetts to take on the 3-3 New England Patriots in a Monday night football primetime affair. The Bears come into this matchup losers of three straight games, including a 12-7 loss to the Commanders on Thursday night football over 10 days ago. The Patriots come into this matchup winners of two straight games with rookie quarterback Bailey Zapp at the helm. The Patriots are last in the AFC East tied with the Miami Dolphins, three games behind first place Buffalo. The Chicago Bears are 2-4 this season after they lost to Washington by a score of 12-7 in their last game. Chicago outgained Washington by a total of 391-214 but turned the ball over twice and went 1-4 to four on fourth down attempts. Justin Fields has thrown for 869 yards, four touchdowns, and five interceptions, while also rushing for 282 yards and one touchdown for the Bears this season. Kyle Herbert has rushed for 402 yards and three scores, while Darnell Mooney has caught 17 passes for 241 yards for Chicago. The Chicago Bears are 31st or next to last in the NFL in scoring with an average of 15.5 points per game. Chicago is 28th in total offense, averaging 293.5 yards per game, with an average of 170.7 yards rushing and 122.8 yards passing per game. The Chicago defense is 11th in points allowed at 20 points per game. The Bears are 16th in overall defense, allowing an average of 341.7 yards per game. Chicago allows 163 yards rushing and 178.7 yards passing per game. The New England Patriots are 3-3 this season after they defeated the Cleveland Browns by a score of 38-15 in their last game. New England gained 399 total yards, went 7-14 on third down attempts, and forced four turnovers in the win. Mac Jones is questionable for this game, and he has thrown for 786 yards, two touchdowns, and five interceptions this season. If Jones doesn't play, Bailey Zapp will start, and he has thrown for 596 yards, four touchdowns, and one interception for the Patriots this season. Ram under Stevenson has rushed for 448 yards and three scores, while Jacoby Mayers has caught 24 passes for 321 yards and one touchdown for New England. New England is 12th in points scored with an average of 23 and a half points per game. In total offense, New England is 13th with an average of 354.7 yards per game. New England averages 131.3 yards rushing and 223.3 yards passing per game. The New England Patriots are allowing an average of 19 points per game which is 7th in the NFL. New England is 12th in overall defense allowing an average of 337.8 yards per game. The Patriots give up 100 19 yards rushing and 218.8 yards passing per game. The Bears are 2-5 against the spread in the last 7 on turf and 1-3-1 against the spread in their last 5 overall. Chicago is 0-4 against the spread in their last 4 in Week 7. Meanwhile, the Patriots are 5-1-1 against the spread in their last 7 in Week 7 and 3-1-1 against the spread in their last 5 overall. New England is 5-2 against the spread in their last 7 at home. The Patriots have been on a roll lately, winning their last 2 games games by a combined 52 points. That has clearly affected the market perception of New England, as this line is actually higher than what the Vikings were laying against Chicago just two weeks ago. Minnesota is a higher power rated team than New England in my eyes and I think 7 is the correct number here. It's always scary backing a young quarterback like Justin Fields against a Bill Belichick defense but his defenses have historically struggled to stop running.
running quarterbacks. It's not much different than what his disciple, Nick Saban's Achilles heel has been as well at Alabama. We just saw a few weeks ago, Lamar Jackson tear up this New England defense with 107 rush yards and 37 points. This defense has historically also struggled against guys like Russell Wilson as well. Some of it is that the Patriots defenders are very smart and cerebral and know exactly what spots to be in, but when plays get broken and there is a scramble situation, they are not overly athletic or fast and have a difficult time defending those runs. Not that I think Fields will post huge scoring numbers, but I think his mobility and ability to run for first downs will help extend some drives. We are likely to see the return of quarterback Mac Jones and he won't be fully mobile with that bad ankle. The Bears can get some pressure, eighth in pressure rate, and do so without ever blitzing. They will force Jones to dump it short against this Matt Eberflus zone. Jones has been a below average starter the last two seasons against zone defenses. He's a top 10 quarterback against man to man defenses. In a game that is going to be very slow with two teams that run the ball at top 10 highest rates, that should cater more for the underdog to cover. There are less plays in time for the favorite to create such a big margin or extend that margin. The Patriots' defense isn't great and can be run on. They are 29th in run efficiency allowed and have been burned by explosive pass plays as well, allowing the fourth highest rate in the NFL. Chicago won't be able to consistently move the ball through the air, but Fields is excellent in downfield passing and can hit on a few chunk plays. The Bears have faced and covered against some really good teams this year, beating the Niners while covering a big number against the Vikings as well. I think New England grinds this game out and wins, but over a touchdown spread is too much. So the Chicago Bears to cover the spread as underdogs is our full game side pick. Neither of these teams is setting records offensively, especially the Bears. Chicago is 20th in yards per play this season and 31st in first downs per game. The running game hasn't been nearly as strong as the Bears would have hoped and they still can't move the ball downfield consistently through the air. On the other hand, New England's defense is playing at a high level following a two-game stretch where the Patriots allowed their opponents to score a combined 15 points. Justin Fields is still having troubles at the controls of the Bears' offense and Chicago's passing game should be neutralized by this stout New England secondary led by rookie cornerback Jack Jones. Regression may be coming for this Patriots offense as well. After having faced poor defenses in the Lions and Browns, Chicago has a very hard time putting points on the board averaging only 15 and a half points per game which is next to last in the league and the Bears have an above average defense that is allowing only 20 points per game. New England allows even fewer points than Chicago at 19 points per game. The total has finished under in 11 of the last 13 games that Chicago has played during October as well as in six of the New England Patriots' last seven games played on Monday Night Football. Chicago comes into this game with one of the worst offenses in the league and will need to convert more of their chances into points if they want to win this game. New England's starting quarterback is up in the air, but both quarterbacks are capable of leading this run first offense. Both teams will rely on a running game which will run down the clock, create fewer possessions for both teams and produce fewer points scored by both. I believe that we are going to see a slower-paced game in this matchup, with both defenses playing well. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyze. Subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.